from Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. Since I put out the Honey Bee and the Fresh Raspberry Soaps, I've had a lot of questions about the Pinky Seal Silicon Mold Making Kit that I use to make the molds for my soap embeds. I've also had several requests to show how I make the embeds using this product. Now today I want to make a couple of fruit molds for some soap ideas that I have. So I've been and got myself a two kilo um, pack of the mold making kit and I'm going to take you along and show you how I make my silicone molds for my soap embeds. Now I have used other silicone mold making kits in the past, about four or five years ago and they really weren't that easy to use. You got this great big tub of silicon and then you got this little bottle of catalyst and the catalyst is what makes that silicon set. You had to work out the ratio of catalyst to silicon that you needed and then you got a very short work time and a very long cure time. I ended up with an awful lot of waste from this product because I just couldn't get those ratios correct um, and I would either end up with a silicon mold that didn't set or I ended up one, with one that was so hard I actually couldn't mold anything out of it so it put me off making silicon molds for a while. I then also tried making silicon molds using like household silicon that you would use in the kitchen, laundry, bathroom, that sort of thing. You mix it up in some water with a little bit of detergent and then you make your mold. There's heaps of videos on YouTube about how to make um, those sort of silicone molds. What I found with that is that you couldn't really mold anything that was soft, so nothing like fruit because it just didn't really, you'd squish your fruit as you pushed it into the silicone. I didn't really get really good definition out of it either and I also found that even buying the cheapest home brand silicon, it still ended up being really expensive to make a silicon mold. So instead I decided to go on the lookout to find a really nice easy silicon making mold kit and I went into a local um, art store and I started talking to them and they recommended this Pinky Sill. A Pinky Sill is put out by a company called Barnes. They're an Australian company and they do have their own website, barnes.com.au. And if you are in Australia and you log on to that website, you can see if they actually do have a physical store near you. And if you go in, because that's where I bought my second lot from, um, they are really helpful and can tell you a lot more about the product. They also do have a New Zealand web address and I'll put all that information across the screen and down in the comments below. I have also checked online and I can see that Amazon.com, so the American version of Amazon, do stock this. So if you're in America or the UK, you can order Pinky Seal through Amazon. The reason I love this product, you do get your silicon and your catalyst, but they get mixed in equal parts. So that's really nice and simple and easy to do. There's no kind of guesswork of um, what ratios you need. So it's just a simple one-to-one -one mix. You get a six-minute working time. Doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it actually is more than enough time. And it says that when you're working in a 25 degree um, Celsius sort of atmosphere, it's about a 20 minute set and cure time. So after 20 minutes, if this is actually set up, you can start using your mold pretty much straight away. Other silicon um, molds that I've made, I've had to wait up to 48, 72 hours before I can actually use the molds. So this is a really good, quick, easy product to use. So before I actually get into showing you how to pour the moulds, I need to go and do a little bit of prep work first. I have some blueberries. I don't need to do much with these. I've had them um, so out of the fridge for a while so they are actually nice and dry. Make sure whatever you're using is dry so it doesn't react with the silicon. I also have some strawberries. We're in strawberry season here in Australia at the moment, or at least in Queensland anyway, and our strawberries are just huge at the moment, so it took me a while to go through them, but I went and tried to find a pack which had lots of little strawberries in them, and all I'm going to do is on my smaller strawberries is I'm going to take a knife and cut the green tops off all of the strawberries here. And the other mould that I want to make is a pineapple mould. So I have my whole pineapple. I've been humming and hiring about how I should actually cut this up for the mould. And I've come to the decision that I'm actually just going to cut a ring out of the pineapple. And that way when I actually pour my pineapple ring, 
I can cut that pineapple into any size sort of slice that I want for the soap. So I can either have, you know, half a pineapple if I really want it, or I can just have like a little um, triangle of pineapple. Now this is a double headed pineapple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this in the house because I don't need the whole pineapple. I'm going to cut this up in the house using my food utensils so we can keep whatever pineapple I don't use to eat. I'm going to chop the top off, plant that in the garden, cut myself a nice ring out the middle, and then I'll come back and I will show you how we make the mold. Okay, so we've got our fruit prepped. So as I said, I don't need to do much with my blueberries. With my strawberries, I've just taken the tops off them and I've made sure on them, I've tried to just take the very tops of them off so we still get that really nice strawberry shape. And then if I want to put um, strawberries into the soap that way I can still put some um, leaves on the top and they don't look too flat on the top and then I have my pineapple ring so I've just chosen to use it as a whole pineapple ring as I said so I could cut it into any sort of thickness that I want it to be and I've also left the rind on here because I've got some ideas for that and I've cut it to about one and a half centimeters thick and I've done it that way so I know when I put this onto my soaps as an embed it won't get in the way of the multi bar cutter so now we have to get these into some molds so we can make our molds now when you get the kit it doesn't really tell you what you should be using to pour your silicon into so my initial thought was to make some trays using some core flute you can pick core flute up in Bunnings if you're here in Australia um, in the woodworking section and this is the stuff that they make sign boards with so whether it be real estate signs or just other little for sale signs that you see around the place so if you do have any of those sort of um, signs floating around you can always um, upcycle those to make some trays to pop your objects into you can also use any non porous sort of item so this is a plastic food container that I have had in the kitchen that the lid fell off so I bought that out and I have made a mold in this as well the silicon peels nicely away from it because it is non-porous for my pineapple I've been looking for something that's big enough for me to pop that into and I have gone and got myself this is actually a pie dish but I use it as a saucer for my pot plants so this is definitely not going back into the kitchen for food use but um, will go back underneath the pot when I've finished with it and all you need to do is make sure that your mold that you're pouring your silicon into you have a one centimeter gap around whatever it is that you're trying to make a, a mold of so this dish actually does fit that pineapple ring perfectly now if you were the pineapple is actually quite a solid piece and it's not really going to move but just to be on the safe side so that when I do pour the silicon in here so that the, it doesn't move what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun here put another stick of glue in I'm going to put a generous amount of glue on the bottom of here and then I'm going to squish the pineapple onto the plate into the center and squish it down so that when I know that I pour that silicon on this isn't going to move now I can see here that's gonna get in the way so I'm just gonna tuck that little piece that's sticking off my pineapple in okay so the next one I'm going to do is my strawberries and all I'm going to do is again I'm going to take a bit of hot glue pop it onto the bottom of the strawberry and then straight into my mold now I've got this mold so it should be big enough to hold six strawberries across hopefully and then three strawberries down so I'll just get those sort of positioned so I know where I'm going so the guy in the shop said all you need is a one centimeter clearance between your pieces and you should be right to go so I'm going to get all of my strawberries stuck in here and then I'm going to put as many blueberries as I can into this one.
almost at the end of putting these blueberries in and what I've made sure to do is on your blueberries you always end up with this tiny little sort of star pattern on the top and I've made sure that on each of these blueberries that I'm popping in that that little star is on the top of this so that when I pour the silicon in it will pick up the detail of that blueberry which will really help people actually see what it is when it becomes the mold so they're all in um, I'm wondering if I can maybe squeeze a couple more in that little area there we'll see probably some of the smaller ones and then we will get to mixing up the silicon so there is no magic formula on how much of this you need to mix up to fill your moulds. There probably is, but it's probably also a very complicated mathematical formula. And this stuff has been designed to be easy to use. This has been designed so that you can use it with or without a set of scales because it is one to one ratios. If you don't have a set of scales, and this is how I first started, even though I had the scales because I didn't realise you could weigh it. What you do, we go by volume. So you need a measuring cup which has lines on it. And what you do, you need two cups. In your first cup, you would pour your white to whichever line point that you want. In your second cup, you would then pour the pink to the exact same line measurement. And then you would pour one cup into the other, mix it up, and then pour into your um, mold that you're making. Now what I did find was that the mould or the cup that had everything mixed into, that actually did set up and then easily pulled out of the cup so you could reuse that cup for more silicon. Not for anything else, just for silicon because this is not food safe silicon. Um, what I found with the second cup however, it it didn't set up because there was no sort of reaction in there and it was too hard to clean so unfortunately I did have a wastage of a cup. I did choose to use one use paper, um, plastic cups for it because I didn't know if it was going to be easy to clean out of um, my good equipment. So I did choose to use these cups. Knowing what I know now, because I've got a set of scales, I now do this by weight, which is still nice and easy. So because you get a one kilo and one kilo, or they're equal weights in bottles, depending what size that you buy, you can basically pour 100 grams of pink in, 100 grams of white in straight into your container, mix it up and pour it. And then when this sets in the cup, you pull it out and you're ready to go for your next batch as well. So that's how I now do it. And because I know that I can easily clean that out in between uses, I now also use a more sturdy jug for my bigger pours but I still use my um, plastic cup for my smaller pours as well so that is reserved specifically for my pinky seal so what I'm going to do here I'm, I'm going to use my um, my jug here and I'm going to do it on the scales but as I said you can do it by volume I'm just choosing to do it um, this way because I find it just a little bit easier for me but um, I know that the weights are exact because I'm a little bit OCD with things like that. So I'm going to tear my scales off and I'm going to start with my white and I'm going to work in smaller quantities. If you pour in, say, 500 grams of each of these and make up a kilo of silicon, for starters, you run the risk that you've actually made up way too much silicon. And if you've got nothing else to pour that into, you've wasted a whole heap of product. Also, by having that much um, silicon in here, you have to mix it for longer, which means you're using your working time up. If you stick to small amounts, so let's say we did 200 grams of each, we've got a 400 gram batch in there. I, I don't have to mix it for as long and I can pour into the mold. If I do need more of the silicon mix, I can then actually mix some more up because I haven't used up all my working time, get that quickly mixed up and then keep topping the mold up until I'm happy. And I've just found I ended up with less wastage by working in smaller quantities. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to mix up 200 grams to start with and I'm going to start with my pineapple mold first because I know that's going to use the least amount of silicon and then my excess can be poured into my other molds. I'll probably finish up using my 
probably the blueberry mold because I've got so much extra height above the blueberries that I won't end, I'll end up with a deep mold but I won't end up with any wasted silicon. So I'm going to take my white and might just move the camera up a little bit so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. And I'm going to pour straight into my jug to 200 grams. Now what you do need to keep in mind that although we haven't mixed any pink in there yet, this is now open to the air. So it is starting to do little things by open to the air. So you, do, you can't just go, oh, I need to go and answer the phone or something. You need to keep working with it. So um, just make sure all other distractions are out of the way while you're working with the silicon. So we're up to 200 on there. I'm going to tear it and now I'm going to pour my pink. Now as soon as that pink goes in, it is going to start its little reaction. So we have to start working quite quick from this point. So I'm just going to pour 200 of my pink straight in here. And then I'm going to mix it up and then pour into my moulds. So now what you want to do is just start stirring it until it is a really nice uniform pink colour so there's no streaks of dark pink or white in there. It's quite easy to work with. It's, um, it all sounds a little bit daunting when you first start but it really is nice and easy. Um, try not to go too vigorous with your stirring like I just did, I completely forgot because it does form bubbles but you do also want to make sure that it is all nicely folded in and what I'm going to do, that's looking pretty good make sure that you scrape around the bottom of your cups to make sure that you've got no um, white or whichever other colour down or the pink down the bottom if you get if you don't mix it in properly your mold won't set so we've got that it's looking really good it's all a nice uniform color and I'm just going to give this a couple of knock downs just to try and bring some of those bubbles up to the surface and now all I'm going to do I'll pop that up there for you bring it in just slightly it doesn't need to go on the scales I'm just doing this so that you can actually see it a bit better and now I'm just going to slowly pour in the silicon. Oops. So I'm just pouring it in. You want it to cover the top just nicely so you get it you don't get any holes in here when you unmold it so that you don't end up with soap leaking out the bottom. So when you are putting your object into the mould, just making sure that um, there is enough clearance so you can fill this up. I have got a couple of bubbles on the top, but we'll sort that out in a moment. I'm just going to pop that down here. I'm now going to pour the rest of this into my strawberry mould, and then I'm going to mix up another maybe 200 grams each of my white and my pink straight back into this jug to finish filling up this particular mold. In fact I may even go and come up to about 300 because I know I'm going to use it for both of these molds. straight on you know you're okay to keep pouring on when you can actually see the original silicon underneath actually moves a bit like when you're making soap and you pour that next little sort of layer on and you see the silica or that you see the soap underneath moving sometimes it's not always an effect that we want but it's that sort of same look so again I'm still short but I would much rather work in smaller portions and know that I'm not wasting 
and that I do have plenty of work time. So I'm going to mix up some more. On that one, I said I was gonna mix it to 300, but I actually stopped at 240 because I wasn't quite sure. So I think we will mix up a little bit more here. Um, definitely gonna go to that 300 this time so we can fill our blueberries up too. Hopefully we've got enough to finish both of these off now. So we've got, that's all nicely mixed. I'm just gonna pour this back on here. So you wanna make sure that all those tips of the strawberries are nicely covered. You can, it's a bit hard to see on the camera, but you can actually see the dark shadows from off the bottom of those strawberries. I can see a bit more there. So I'm gonna pour a bit more in. And that should actually now have covered all of those strawberries nicely. And now we can move on to the blueberries and hopefully we have enough in here to fill it up. If not, we'll just mix up that little bit more. And you can see by gluing them in, they don't move. So that's one less thing to have to worry about. And I think we probably need, oh, about another... 100 grams, 150 grams of each just to finish filling this mould up and then that should be right. So I did have a couple of people say to me on particularly the honeybee soap, why didn't I look on Etsy for moulds because there's heaps of great ones there. And yes, there's some really nice moulds on Etsy, but unfortunately most of the sellers on Etsy are from America and it just costs an absolute fortune to get them shipped over and in most cases the actual shipping costs more than what the mold does itself. I've drooled over the Vanulay molds and I actually do have a couple which I got from off eBay with a um, heavily discounted shipping rate and um, I absolutely love them but it just costs too much so there was a bee mold that i really liked um, the mold was really reasonably priced at about seven dollars i think and then um, the postage was about twenty dollars so it was almost three times the cost of that just that one mold for me to get eight molds plus postage it was going to work out to be about eighty dollars and I basically for my one or my 500 gram or my one kilo pack, I think it was, I it was the one kilo pack. I paid just under 80 Australian dollars and I got my bees and I got my uh, raspberries and I actually got kind of a chocolate chip mold. The chocolate chips weren't very good to start with. So it, it just isn't very cost effective to bring those in from America. So that is why I have chosen to make my own instead. But if you are in America, check out Vanule. She has got some gorgeous molds and they're very reasonably priced as well. So we've got those now full up. Now on these, you can see, I uh, hopefully you can see, I don't want to pick them up too much. There's like lots of little tiny bubbles on the top of these molds. Now it's up to you, you can either leave them there or if you get yourself like a little toothpick um, or anything sharp, you can go around popping those really big bubbles. The other thing that I found was really good, you can actually just move your toothpick around on the top and it does pop those bubbles. It really depends how vigorously you stirred at the beginning. And you can also just gently blow on it and that will pop all the really little bubbles. It doesn't affect the mould, it's just an aesthetics thing, so it's up to you whether you want to get rid of them or not. I 
I do like to pop the bigger bubbles so I don't have anything that puts my molds um, out of whack. Now what I'm going to do is pop these down onto a flat surface. These should take about 20 minutes to set up and firm up and then we'll come back and we will clean them out and we will get to making. Okay, so these have actually been sitting here for about an hour now. I had a few other things I wanted to go and do and I know that these are now nicely set up. It is also quite cool here today, which is why I've given it that longer than the 20 minute work time. And just to show you what I mean about being able to clean the containers out nice and easily, if we pull the spoon out, um, it actually does just peel straight off and it will peel out of that jug as well so I can actually then start to um, reuse the jug for my next project or for the next time I'm doing the silicon so that's just showing you if you do use the one-time use sort of drink cups you can very easily clean them out and reuse them when you do pour them all into the same container so let's get these um, molds unmolded and then I will get to cleaning that bit later. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my pineapple one in this round dish and all I'm going to do is just gently prise it off the edge of the ceramics here. It does come away but because it is such a thick piece it's just going to take that little bit of coaxing. I can feel it starting to come away now and it is very flexible so once you can get a good piece to pull away you'll be able to get your finger or thumbs through in there and I can feel it coming up now and up it comes so my pineapples in there now you will occasionally get some of this leakage around um, your actual piece that you're molding and all I do is once I get my piece out is I take the scissors and I just trim around the edge so we can actually get this pineapple out of here now as I've said before this is not a food grade silicon so that pipe piece of pineapple now unfortunately it does have to go into the bin but we do have this mold so just to tidy up this bit of mold here I've got my scissors and I'm just going to start trimming all this excess away from off here Right, so I've got all that excess silicon trimmed off here. This is a fairly easy piece. The blueberries may be a little bit more difficult or a little bit more time consuming, I should say, to actually trim off that excess um, silicon there. But what you can now see, I'll just cut that little bit back there as well. So I have got really detailed pineapple in there and around the edge it's probably a little bit hard to see at the moment I've got all of the sort of skin from off that pineapple I've got really fine details of where the little bits of leaf were sticking off and things like that so what I now have to do with this mold is give it a good clean and what I usually do whenever I make a mold I have some melt and pour in a container um, it was a melt and pour that I got in that I wasn't really very happy with the quality of it and all I do is I keep melting it down and every time I make a silicon mould I pour my first pour with that melt and pour just to pull out any of the bits of food that are stuck behind so it doesn't get into my actual soaps. So I'm going to go and get these ones out of the mould next. So let's try our strawberry one. So this is again just pulling it away because I've made this one I can if I'm finding it a little bit too hard if I just cut down where the tape is and I can easily put this one back together later so I'm just gonna prise that off being careful not to cut yourself I'm probably not really doing it the safest way here um, I'm just going to go and grab a knife so I can cut down this side, here's one. I'm going to just come straight down through all my layers of tape and I'm going to pull 
that side off. It appears to have actually stuck to my sticky tape, <laughs> which is not that bad a thing. It doesn't really matter if I destroy this because I can actually put it back together again. Now the other cork loop mould I used, I actually used a different packing tape to put it together. So it obviously doesn't like this particular packing tape because it has really stuck to it. That's right, we've got that pinned out. So I'll keep pulling this one apart and then we'll have a look at the strawberries. Okay, so I managed to get that out of that mould. It is okay to use as a silicone mould here. I can feel it's a bit tacky from the from where the tape is, but the actual rest of the mould where the tape was isn't sticky. So lesson learned for me is to use the decent packing tape when making these moulds. Now it's just a matter of getting these strawberries out. And as you can see, it is a really flexible silicone. So I'm just going to bend it back and pull the strawberries out and I can already see from my point of view that there is some beautiful detail from the seeds of these strawberries. Now I've got a bit of tape there, that's probably why that's sticky. Um, So when I did the raspberry mould, I actually found, because raspberries are quite soft when I was trying to get them out, I ended up with raspberries squished all through the mould. The strawberries aren't going to be so bad, but if you do need to squish them to get them out, um, what you will find that you will have to do a little bit of extra cleaning on here. Once I've got all these out, it is really easy to unmould soap out of here because the soap is a lot more solid than what the fruit is because fruit is quite soft um, it, it's a little bit more difficult to dig them out of here but they do eventually come and it just means it just needs a little bit of washing out and that is also why I use just some old melt and pour to clean out the moulds to get rid of any of this sort of residue that is left behind so I'll get these strawberries out and then we'll move on to the blueberries Okay, so I have managed to get all the strawberries out of the mould. I've run it through some water to try and get all the bits out. And I have to just trim up all the edges of here. But I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I do my clean out with some melt and pour. But while it's doing that, I will show you that it really isn't that hard to take it out of these core flutes. I think that is something to do with the packing tape and also just the sheer size of that particular mould that made it look so hard. This one here, you can see I've just got my fingers under it and I'm pulling it straight out. I can clean the bottom of um, these, get all the glue out and reuse these. And you can see we've got all our little blueberries. And they do, because these, as I said, these are soft fruits, so they are hard to get out without making a complete and utter mess. As you try and pull these out, the blueberries I can already see are starting to squish and it just gets everywhere. So I'm actually gonna go and take these blueberries out over the sink and then we'll get on to the next bit. So I've melted the melt and pour down in like 30 second bursts until it's all nice and melted. And all I'm going to do is just tip it straight into this mold. And as I said, this is just to clean the mold out and to pick up any um, leftover residue from off that pineapple. And I will do it with all of my molds. So when, once this one has actually set, um, I will then melt it back down and pour it into the strawberry mold and then the blueberry mold as well. And that just really helps to clean it out. So I'll come back in a moment and show you what this looks like once it's done. Okay, so the pineapple is now all set up and I'm just going to very carefully peel back that silicone mold and pop that straight out. It is still warm, but it's more just to actually clean it out. You can see the detail of the pineapple and all around the edge here, you can see the skin of that pineapple. And when I come to use this, I'll actually just chop this up into the sizes that I want for each of the soaps. Now something I also do when I'm cleaning out my mold, so this piece, I'm just gonna pop on my scale. I know that to fill this, I need about 190 grams of melt and pour. So I'll actually write that on the bottom of my mold. So I know how much melt and pour I need to melt the next time I 
um, want to do that one. So what I'm going to do now is just break this up, chop it all up, and I'm going to do exactly the same, melt it down and do my strawberries. But this time when I do it, I'll probably just pop my um, my mould straight onto the scales, weigh it out, and again I'll write down on the bottom how much melt and pour it takes to fill all these strawberry moulds. So I'm going to go and do that, and then I'm going to do my next video using this pineapple mould, so stay tuned for that. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make my moulds using the Pinky Seal. I do highly recommend this product for anyone wanting to make their own moulds, it's nice and easy to do. If you've enjoyed watching me make um, my moulds, please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and I will get back to you with any questions that you may have. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel because in a couple of days time I'll be bringing out a video um, showing how I now use this mould and it will let you know when that video is out. So thanks for watching and until the next time, have a great week.